Okay, right on track here. Okay, uh, let's talk about how to uh, open, uh, analyze, and close a case. So it's a three-step process. I'm going to go through the process mechanically, and then I'm going to demonstrate it. One thing, too, is um, I mentioned earlier there's sort of more, well, um, I'll, say, I'll say that for later. Actually, what I wanted to mention was when you, go when you practice cases, I found for myself that it was very mechanical early on in the process of practicing. Okay? So step one, step two, step three, every single time, um, very rigidly, until I sort of mastered that process. And then later what I'd do is I would be sort of more creative and more flexible. And I, I don't know if that's sort of how everyone does it, but I thought I'd just point that out, that for me it was very regimented early on until I could do it in my sleep, sort of the, the first part of a case. Uh, and then I started getting very flexible. So an example is you heard of frameworks, which is sort of standardized approaches for solving certain kinds of problems. Um, you'll oftentimes find that in reality, you'll use multiple frameworks within a case. Okay, we'll talk about it. I call, it, I call that a compound framework problem. And, um, and it's very hard for um, someone who's just practicing to do a compound case problem because they're thinking, which problem is it and which framework do I fit it in? But as you get information through the case, you realize, ah, I thought it was a you know, cost problem, but it's actually like a marketing problem. Different problem, different framework. And sometimes people can't make that transition. Okay? So here's how I open a case. There are a lot of ways to be right. Um, first thing I do is I stall. Okay? They say, client says, you know, should I go acquire my biggest competitor? Okay? And I always say, no joke, hmm, that's an interesting question. Bought myself 10 seconds. Five seconds before I speak, because you get past six studies show, if you pause for more than five seconds, people think something's wrong. Five seconds, say the word again, another five seconds. I'm thinking like, how the heck do I solve this problem? I have no freaking idea. Okay? Um, and I've had, I've had, out of my 60 cases I did, I've probably, I've said that probably at least 20, 30 times, and about 15 of them I literally had no idea, because it was sort of really out of left field. Okay? And I had to stop and think for a second. Um, so it's good to have a phrase, don't all use that phrase, but if you, if you <laughs> It'll all come back to me. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to verify your understanding of facts and terminology. Very important. Because in different industries, they use different words to mean different things. Uh, so, for example, if I, I had a, a client who was in reinsurance, okay, and so I might give a case that would say uh, the CEO of a reinsurance company uh, is concerned that premiums are down 15%. What do you tell the client to do? And, and if, if I were on the receiving end of that, <coughs> my first thought is, hmm, that's an interesting question. What the hell is reinsurance? Right? And so I would say, can I ask some background questions before I get started? Sure. What's reinsurance? It's the insurance company for insurance companies. Oh, okay. So for example, if you were in a hurricane, insurance companies have insurance policies on their homeowners policies. So if they lose more than $2 billion in Florida, for example, the reinsurance company pays. Ah, okay. So the insurance company, I get that. Um, Next question, what's a premium? Is that like profits? No, that's like revenues. Okay, that's what people pay for on their policy. They call it premiums. Ah, okay. So basically you're saying that the client is asking me that uh, revenues are down 20%, what should he do? Is that right? Yes, I got it. Okay. So I'll, almost all the time I would ask, I'll ask clarifying questions. Um, for a couple of reasons, because you, you don't want to like, just because of a, a difference in vocabulary words, like blow a case because you misunderstood the information. So if you don't get it, explain it. And sometimes what happens is a lot of interviews, they will use um, their actual clients' cases. They'll just change the names. So they have like, they've done lots of data analysis and they know everything. And, and so some of these clients are in really esoteric businesses. Like I had one, I had one case that was um, in a really bizarre healthcare insurance client was the client situation. And it took me 10 minutes just to even figure out what, what business are they in? Like, and, and, like, and there's like, there's not a customer, but there's like a customer and an affiliate. It was a very complicated relationship, and I couldn't even understand the basic facts of the case, let alone the problem they were asking. I had a very hard time understanding, is there one customer? Do they pay? No, they don't pay. Somebody else pays. Oh, so the person paying the money is not the person receiving the service. Correct. But there's a fourth party involved. That's the government. Oh, how does that work? And I couldn't understand that. And so I spent, I devoted time to figuring out just what the heck are they talking about. So if you don't understand what they're talking about, Take the time to make sure you understand it because if you're solving the wrong problem, you can't get it right. Okay? Second thing to verify is making sure that, the, that your understanding of what problem this client wants solved is in fact right. Okay? 
So pay attention to the specific words and literally the grammar. What's the subject? What's the object? Right? And think about what it is they're asking. And, and I would spit it back out. Paraphrase. It's like a good listening skill in general. Spit it back out. So do you mean the client wants to know whether or not they should merge with their biggest partner? Correct. Got it. Okay. Um, so that's important. And, and the last one is when you open a case, the third step in opening a case is you structure the case for analysis, okay? which is a, a putting a, a framework base, picking the right framework essentially, and saying to solve this case, we need to understand four core ideas. So to open a case, stall, verify, structure. I'll move it up. There you go. <coughs> yes. Next slide. Okay. What do I mean by structuring a case? Um, <laughs> I love when people do that. It's a four-step process. To structure a case means first identifying the type of problem or situation that we're trying to solve for the client. Like it's a profit problem is a very common one. Profits are down, what do you do? Oh, okay, it's a profit problem. Or uh, they're thinking of launching a new product. Oh, that's a new product problem. Okay. Or they're thinking of entering the China market. Oh, that's a market entry problem. Okay. So there's sort of categories of problems. And, and I'll show you for what kinds of problems <coughs> which frameworks I found useful to solve those kinds of problems. So it's like a matching thing. So the first thing you're doing when you're opening a case is figuring out what the heck are they talking about? Okay, what kind of problem is it? And sometimes it's confusing. So that's why you have to verify your understanding, make sure you understand that. Uh, find the problem type and then pick the right framework for that kind of problem. Okay, because if you sort of pick the wrong framework, you start gathering data in the wrong places, right? And it sort of wastes time more than anything else. Once you have a framework chosen, you want to pick the key components, identify the key components of that framework. So as an example, I'll show you in a second. If it's a pro problem, the, the framework is, you know, revenues minus cost equals profits, right? So to understand, if profits are down by 20%, we need to look at revenues and we need to look at costs. And that'll help us understand. That's sort of like a standard opening for a profit problem. And I'll walk through all the standard verbiage. You don't want to mention the actual framework by name. So don't say, you know, oh, that's a mergers and acquisition framework problem, or that's a Portis Five Forces problem. Um, just use the framework. Okay? It makes you look smarter, and they, you know, they know they know you sort of know this stuff, and but it's just like pretend, right? That sort of came out of your head. Um, and then finally, draw the framework out. Okay? It's important. So I'll give you an example of that uh, right now. So let's say um, the example is. The case interview is um, uh, the CEO of ABC company comes to you and say profits are down by 20%. What do you do? Okay. And, and I would say I would verify. It's like, hmm, that's interesting. Let me think about that for a second. Verify my understanding of what they're, what they're asking for. And, um, and then say, okay, that's a profitability problem. I know that. I've seen those before. And what I would say, great, to understand uh, how to address this client situation, we need to look at their company's profits and why it's decreasing by 20%. Once we understand that, we can figure out what we can do about it. To understand profitability, we need to look at two key things, revenue and costs. And I would literally, I'll literally, literally draw this as I'm talking. Okay. And just from a dynamic standpoint, um, sometimes I'll actually move my chair closer to them. So rather than being sort of adversarial, I will do it this way. Let me show you. To understand profits, we've got to look at revenues first okay, and then costs. Um, and that's more collaborative, <laughs> and it's a client skill too, right? If you're meeting an adversarial client, it's a lot, and this is, there's a reason for it. If you're meeting an adversarial client, when you when a police officer interrogates a criminal, what do they do? Right across from one another. If you're being collaborative, you do it together. You see, and so it has a different body language. So I'll do that too. I'm doing little things, um, and but but also the other reason is that we don't have to like write upside down because they can't. See, if you do it this way, they can't read it. Like, I can't draw it upside down, so I gotta come around and say, come on over here, let me show you. First, we gotta look at profits, revenues, and costs, or I'll draw it my way, and then I'll turn it around and show it to them. So it's like a lot of little, little, little things, um, but you wanna figure out how you're comfortable sort of presenting information visually. I told you, like, visual is client friendly, right? 
So you can't just say, well, obviously, profitability, you've got to look at revenues and costs, right? And within costs, there's sort of fixed costs, variable costs, this, that, and that kind of cost, unit costs, and you've got to look at the trend line of this. They can't follow, right? So you've got to draw it out. So it's very important to draw that out. And so for, for all the major types of case problems, I will give you the list of my four favorite <coughs> frameworks, and I'll give you the standard opening that I've used on those four frameworks. Okay? So like I mentioned earlier, opening a case is very mechanical. <coughs> and then a, as you get information, that's where sort of creative problem solving and analytics sort of comes into play. Okay? But up at this point, it's really about sort of opening it correctly. So that's how to structure a case. Um, The next step in the process is once you sort of opened it up, you've sort of laid out how you're going to approach this case, all the major categories of issues. The next thing is to analyze the case. I Googled the word analyze last night. It turns out the definition, which is actually kind of nice, is uh, the separation of any material or abstract entity into its constituent elements, which basically means to analyze means to break apart into pieces. Okay? So if you have a business, it's a bunch of Lego blocks. Analysis means you pull apart the Lego blocks. Look at each one individually. Okay? By the way, that, that's the, what I call the backup framework. If you ever get a case where you don't know what's going on, and it doesn't match any of the ones I've mentioned, and I had a couple of those. You get the wacko, you get weird ones once in a while. Um, if you've got enough interviews, you, it's not a matter of if, you know, if you'll get them. You definitely, it's a matter of when. When in doubt, pull apart the pieces. Yeah. So for, for example, uh, well, that's not a bad example. So, so that's sort of the main idea. To analyze means to break out into its component parts, and this is what you do all day long as a consultant. You're breaking things into parts, you're breaking the parts into more parts, you're breaking those parts into more parts, and, and we'll talk about why you do that. And you have to do this in a case interview. Have to. Impossible to pass without doing this. Very important. Okay, so when they say analyze a case, it means breaking it apart. And I'll give you some ways of how to, st standard ways of breaking things apart. But even if you forget everything I said, and then you get a question, if the first thing is out of your mouth as well, gee, that's interesting. I'm not sure how to solve that, but let's break it apart. Okay? That's a good way to start. Uh, let's see. Okay, step by step, how do you analyze a case? Sort of generically, and then we'll go into, sp into specific cases. First thing I do is I ask them if there's any information about the situation that would suggest where I ought to start in my framework. Okay? So I would say um, to, uh, to understand why ABC companies' profits are down 20% and how to respond to that, we've got to look at the revenues and the costs because those two combined form profits. Okay? Do we have any information from the client that would indicate whether this is a revenue problem or a cost problem? 80% okay? of the time they'll say no. Okay? Or they'll smile and smirk and still say no. Um, sometimes they'll say, sure, you know, why don't we start with costs first? And it, they deliberately lead you down a, a wrong end. Like it's it's, they know it's a revenue problem, but they're telling you, why don't you start with costs first? Just to see if you can figure out that you threw you down the wrong direction and see if you can kind of come back up. Okay? About 20% of the time, they actually tell you, particularly if you have like a, a big framework, there's a lot of things you need to analyze. Um, they can save you time. And if, sometimes, they don't have to see, sometimes they don't have data on parts of it. So like if they know it's a revenue problem, and they and because it's a real life case they, they were working on, they didn't do any of the cost analysis, so they have no data, so they don't want you to go there sometimes. So if you ask them, they'll sort of steer, to, steer you sort of in that direction about 20% of the time. So that's what I usually do. Again, this is my process. Um, you can certainly succeed without without doing this step. But the next thing is you state a hypothesis. Okay, and um, hypothesis. Interestingly enough, I, I actually never did this explicitly when I was interviewing. I sort of did it implicitly. They could tell I, I had a hypothesis. I never used the words, but it's actually not a bad idea to use the word. Uh, hypothesis, you know, it comes from you know, science and the scientific method uh, of you, you have an experiment and you think that you know, the key to curing cancer is in like gene number 24. Okay? What, do we gotta new, what do we gotta do to sort of isolate and prove whether or not that assertion is, that hypothesis is correct? Well, we gotta you know, need structure an experiment to figure that out. Same process to solving business problems. Again, this is a consulting process. It's not the only process. You can solve them business problems in creative ways, lots of other ways. But in consulting, it has to be this sort of scientific method approach. So I'll give you an example of a hypothesis. Um, company ABC's profits are down 20%. We need to look at revenues and costs. 
Uh, I'm going to hypothesize that it's probably a revenue problem. So I'm going to gather some data on to see whether that's true or not. Okay? Um, and then I'll, and then I'll continue. Have revenues declined, stayed the same, or increased? Okay. Oh, revenues have increased. Oh, okay. Hypothesis is wrong. Profits are down, but revenues are up. What does that mean? Interpretation. It's a cost problem, right? Okay, so my hypothesis was incorrect. New hypothesis. I'll say, ah, obviously it's not a revenue problem. The revenue is not causing the loss in profitability. It must be cost. Okay. So that's an example of how that, the dialogue would work. Uh, the third step, which I sort of already demonstrated, is you, once you state your hypothesis, you want to pick a branch of the framework to start. Okay, so I said my hypothesis is it's a revenue problem. Let's look and analyze revenues first. Has revenue changed? If so, in which direction? Right. The next step is to identify the key issues within that branch of logic. You'll see in a second that there are a lot of branches to these sort of frameworks that are sort of very logical. Um, so I will say, uh, to, to understand whether or not revenue is causing the profitability problem, we need to know if revenue has changed and in which direction. So has revenue increased, stayed the same, or decreased? It's, three, it's only one of those three things. And those are the three issues. Do we have any data that would indicate which one of the three is correct? Okay. Um, and so I'm very deliberate about that. So stating the things I want to know and consider and then ask for data. Okay. It's very important to do that, by the way. Um, it, it seems like a, a little obvious, but obviously revenue can only go up, down, or stay the same, right? Um, but you, again, we're trying to be client friendly, so we're laying out all the issues. Um, and on that one in particular, I probably wouldn't draw it out because it's sort of simple. You know. um, but in general, when, you have, when you're starting to work down a branch, you want to break out what are the key issues within that branch, state all the major issues, and then dive in. Okay. If you just dive in, without stating all of them, they will assume you missed them. Okay? They will assume you missed them. And I'll give you an example of that a little bit later on. Then what I